Hi all, let's continue our look at the secrets of chess tactics and today let's look at pins. So you can follow along and try uh, these examples yourself on the improved menu at chessworld.net. Puzzle books and if you want to go into the tactics category, middle game, tactics, weaknesses to exploit and we check out that category. We're going to be looking at the pin tactics today. So what is a pin? There's a nice definition of wiki. A pin is a situation brought on by an attacking piece on which a defending piece cannot move without exposing a more valuable defending piece on the other side to capture by the attacking piece. So moving the attacking piece to bring on the pin is called pinning. So when you pin something, you're pinning. The defending piece so restricted is described as pins. It's the victim. Only pieces that can move an indefinite number of squares in a horizontal vertical di diagonal line can pin. So it's you're only pinning with your bishops, rooks and queens. Um, kings, knights and pawns cannot pin. Any piece can be pinned except the king because the king uh, must be immediately removed uh, from check under all circumstances. And the most important types of pin are absolute and relative. So absolute is against the opponent's king. Relative is, say, against the opponent's queen. The risk with the relative pins is that they can sometimes have the option to move out of that relative pin. So that's the theory of it. Let's look at some practical examples now. And I'll put it onto a uh, big screen mode. This first example from Aaron Nimsbich, one of the leading hypermodernists, who categorized, by the way, in his classic book, My System, pins as a very special case of not just a tactical concept, but a strategic one as well. He realized that they they could in, be used in a sort of positional manner to immobilize the opponent's position. But here we have a super cool tactic. Five seconds to pause video. What would you play here? Okay, the rooks attack. So you might think, well, you need to move the rook, surely. No, there's a pinned g7 pawn. Think again. I'll give you a tiny bit of time to think, think again if you're moving the rook. You can actually play queen g6. And there's an unstoppable threat here after king g2. And we get out of this check. We go here in particular is a good square. The unstoppable threat is queen takes h6. What can black do about that? If the bishop moves, we can take and then mate there or just a mate with queen takes g7 and the bishop moves. So it's a really super cool pin, vividly uh, demonstrating the power of the pinned piece or pawn. Well, it's illusionary and pin and win, basically. The expression pin and win, definitely winning here. So let's go on to another example. Five seconds to pause video. So Emmanuel Lasker, one of the world chess champions. He creates a remarkable uh, pinning concept by first playing the check. So the queen's pinned to the king. But um, that's not a big deal here. If we take the queen, then knight takes. So what actually can we play here to really invoke another kind of pin, and which is winning the queen? If I give you five seconds. Okay, to make this a big deal, we introduce rook d8 check, creating a pins knight there. So that's immobilized, and now we can just take the queen. So that's a wonderful example of a pin. You might be wondering on king f8 in this particular example, then there's bishop h6 check. So we can drive the king to g8 and then we can deliver queen e8 checkmate. Or on knight c6, there's another wonderful tactic. Queen takes c6. And then we have rook d8 checkmate. Like bishop and rook, opera style, Morphe opera style checkmate. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that one. Our third example. I'll give you five seconds. I'm hoping you'll see this one. Relatively easy. So identify the pin piece or pawn. Assume its power is illusionary. And then you can end up with queen takes f3. Yeah, that pawn was pinned to the king. Absolute pin. So a nice simple example there. And another one similarly. Uh, What's pinned in this position? Five seconds. Okay, the pawn on e7 is pinned. 
So we can play bang, queen takes f6. This was an absolute pin, not a relative pin. The pawn was pinned to the king. Pardon me, that was a mistake. <laughs> I meant queen e7, mouse slip there. Queen takes e7, checkmate. So here, five seconds. Okay, that pawn is pinned. We can play rook h5 check. And now invoke the power of the double check, forcing the king to move. So check from both queen and rook. And on king takes, there's queen g5. So black had to... Uh, God, actually, there's no king takes because the bishop, the bishop, pardon me, is protecting the rook. This is actually checkmate. This double check and mate. My bits. Okay, so on to the next example. This is a classic from a Fisher game. So how to exploit the pin. If you haven't seen this before, I think you'll have to be a tactical genius to, to work this out if you haven't seen this before. But you might want to pause the video. Five seconds to pause the video. Okay, the first move is actually causing interruption first. e5, to kick the knight back, to interrupt the queen and rook. And it's here we have uh, basically a kind of relative pin against d7 against the queen, and an absolute pin against f7 against the king. And both come to light here with this next move, brilliant move, bishop takes f7. So uh, king takes... And now knight e6, so exploiting that pin, and it's absolutely winning. Uh, the game actually continued. Rezevsky, uh they had rivalry, uh, played on and on. Actually, he didn't he didn't want to lose in in less than twenty moves, but it's absolutely lost from here. He lost his queen, and it carried on a bit. But it's winning the queen. Uh, there's nowhere for the queen to run, and if the king takes here, then that it just gets mated off the check. The king gets mated pretty soon. So a crushing use of pins there in this example. So here, this was uh, bad preparation, I believe, from Vichy Anand following a stem game uh, disastrously with the black pieces. And in fact, white just played a simple refutation, queen e2. Yeah, because the knight's going to be like pinned to the king on d5, you know, with d3. Well, not, not uh, well, it's just a disaster. And it, it ends in disaster here. Uh, so knight c6, check. Now, the next example, how do we create a vicious pin in this example? If I give you five seconds. Okay, you actually just capture on e6 and this creates that pinned pawn relative pin bang rook takes e4 uh, also by the way on f takes it's still because that bishop was adding protection to the queen and now that protection's gone bang rook takes e4 is possible there so great use of a pin here as well now this check it would be lethal if king h1 knight f2 is full king queen and king or king g2 there's queen f2 check and it gets nasty after you know things like queen takes h2 but white can actually save themselves if i give you five seconds white uses a pin to save the position with knight b6 so on queen takes there's now queen d4 check so that that rook will be pinned to the queen right to pin and on queen takes, you know, white's material up after knight takes, rook takes, bishop takes, white's just material up. So a crushing move, invoking the power of the pin in a defensive manner. In this fascinating example, it looks as though we've got two pins, an absolute pin on h7, and a relative pin on f7, that f7 pawn. Uh, it looks as though rook g6 is really tempting, but black hands are the offensive resource there not f takes because there's rook takes f8 and that's winning for white but actually f5 so that protects g7 so that makes things tricky can we eliminate this defensive resource of f5 there's a move white could play first which is absolutely crushing if i give you five seconds so what would you play first best move here five seconds pause video 
Okay, we can still exploit um, the pin on the F7 pawn with rook e6. So can't take as a rook takes F8 crashing through. Now this means the F5 defense is less effective. And we can play rook g6 here now. And so black tries to defend g7 like that. But that neglects f7. We can take here, threatening checkmate. There's a check here. We can play here. Bureaucracy, uh, a bit of bureaucracy forms to be filled, etc. G3, another bit of bureaucracy. We don't have to take that. In fact, we can step back to h1. And that's absolutely winning. Uh, it's going to be absolutely winning. Uh, checks, we can just get out of it soon and we'll be mating on h7 so a crushing example there in this next example how do we use the pin if i give you five seconds okay we can actually pin that queen to the king absolute pin and that's absolutely winning if the queen took we have queen e7 checkmate on rook takes rook takes we're pinning that queen uh still uh so it's it's absolutely winning here so rook takes rook takes if bishop takes we have queen takes d8 checkmate if queen uh yeah so if queen takes queen e7 checkmate here is a crushing use of a pin as a preliminary to a winning attack if i give you five seconds Okay, dark square weaknesses. We can actually pin that bishop and totally take out the defender with rook takes. And the key point here, can you guess? Okay, crushing blow. You can play queen f6, threatening mate. And because on g takes, there would be rook g4, king moves, bishop takes his mate. So that's absolutely crushing the... here five seconds okay we can take out the defense of h7 first so queen h7 we got a pin pawn against f7 which we can now exploit with okay we can exploit that it seems in two ways Knight takes e6 is one of the ways. So that's four king, king, and queen. Now rook takes, threatens queen h8. So that really has to do something radical, give up the queen, but well, that's absolutely winning for white. Now here there's a pinned rook, and there's also the, a pinned pawn, both absolute pins in this position. Five seconds. Okay, we can play the crushing move, rook g5, wrenching open the f file. Now, what would you say, rook f1 or queen h8? Okay, I'm hoping you'll choose queen h8 because rook f1, there's king g8. So queen h8, we drag the rook back and now we can play the check. And with that form pawn in the center, this is check mating. Queen takes mating. Now here, our queen's attacked. What can we play which invokes winning pins? Five seconds. Let's pause the video. Okay. Bishop g7, double check. So our queen cannot be taken because of that other check. Now we can take here. And actually we can create another pin. Queen pin to the uh, king. And that pawn is pinned to the queen. We can exploit this with, can you guess? Knight g3. So if that pawn takes, we can take the queen there. And now here, the back row's weak. We can just play check. And this is mating. Cute stuff. Invoking pins there. By Gata Kamsky. Great Gata Kamsky. Former US champion. Now here, queen's gambit decline trap. A well-known trap. This is an example of a relative pin. What can we do here with black? If I give you five seconds. 
this backfires on white totally knight takes d5 so offering the queen because now we have this check we're going to get the queen back we either just we can either just take care leaving that pin in place or just execute the pin immediately both are winning absolutely those moves here Morozovic had a pinned piece and he played rook takes h3 and fell victim for rook d8 check mating because knight e8 taking there is check mating what could he have done first in this position if i give you five seconds okay sometimes it's very important to unpin and king j would have been winning would have been absolutely winning with the big threat of rook takes h3 tragedy there uh yeah that rook takes h3 if like taking and then check there's king h7 things like king h7 with rook h1 coming the queen is uh stopping all the exit routes of the king there so this unpinning as a preliminary to attack is yes yeah, sometimes it's very very important to do that it's a type of prophylaxis before going on the attack put yourself beyond defeat is an art of war to, uh, principle put yourself on beyond people before going on to the attack now here white play and mate okay i hope you can spot it yep we can pin that queen that's a desperate move and in fact we have a strong very strong move mating here nothing beats really the mate in one forget taking the queen there that form pawn <laughs> holds g7 for the checkmate and our last example hope you can spot this five seconds so what is pinned in this position the pinned piece or pawn the power of it is illusionary according to Nimzovich. where is the illusion okay it's f7 so the illusion is g6 so we can actually snap g6 off and then checkmate here so i hope you enjoyed these uh some of them simple examples some of them more complex but you got the gist of it pin tactics you can come and practice these and other puzzles at chess world from the improved menu uh puzzle books let's go to the overview mode uh so there's a lot there's a new book by the way megan's calls and puzzles you might want to check out 45 spanning his career there 45 i've just um, curated just yesterday as well but for the tactic section i thought we could go over pins today hope you got something from that check that out yourself and also the playlist secrets of chess tactics which this video is part of to revise the other tactical instruments for winning chess okay thanks very much